skip over here to this other one. Rocking back and forth. That, that's just barely anything there. So I'm going to just hit it with the 320. I'm going to skip the file. Yeah, that, that's all that one took. So now you want to check, you know, your, your other frets. Now this one feels a little high, the one next to it right here. Your goal is to, to be able to glide this this uh, fret rocker across the entire fingerboard and not have it rock at all. So that that's good right there. Good there. Good there. A little bit right here. Get it with that 600. So yeah, I think we're good. You know, I can go and check, you know, the rest of it. I've already been over this whole deck a bunch of times already, so. Um, we've got everything at 600, so now we're gonna, uh, now we're gonna hit it with the uh, 1500. Anything that we've, uh, we've done. We've messed with, so. That looks pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna get back to these scuff pad things. Uh, I've got, I used two different ones. The the package says these are 180 grit. They, they feel more like a 320 grit to me. And then I've got these yellow kind. Uh, they, you know, they these come bigger. I just cut them down, you know, and, and uh, to size. This is more like, probably like a six or 800 grit. They both say uh, super fine on the back, but but the uh, yellow ones are finer. So, um, I'm gonna go back on these ends and I'm gonna hit them with this. This, this is very quick and I like the results. But when I first started doing this, and there's a lot of people uh, that, uh, you know, everybody does it a little bit different, but I use these little fret end files and these things are just like a, a pain, a pain to work with. I mean, you could literally sit here and spend hours trying to trying to file the, these beveled ends and get that little sh sharp edge off there. It just takes a lot of time, and uh, I found that these scuff pads work just really well for taking those sharp edges off those beveled ends, and uh, and you know, it's, it's it's it creates kind of a worn-in feeling as if you played this neck. You know, this neck was. 10 years old and been played a bunch it's just uh, you know by the time you're done it's just a uh, it's, it's, you know it's got an abrasive in it but it's just not really taking off a lot of material and it just knocks down those those hard corners and you know I think, I think it's good stuff so that, that's all I really do on those on those ends I don't spend a lot of time with files and all that stuff trying to get all that stuff super clean and I don't know round it over whatever it's just this this works real well and it feels good so I've got that done um, only thing I really have left to do is uh, um, hit it with some quadruple lot steel wool over the top of those 1500 things uh, 1500 grip marks and this is just gonna shine everything up um, I'm just kind of doing this for demonstration purposes normally I wouldn't do this just just yet um, because this is a, a maple fingerboard and that means I've got to clear coat after this next car carved and everything I'm gonna clear coat this whole thing the fingerboard everything the clear is gonna go over the, the uh, frets and and then I'm gonna have to uh, spend some time. I'm gonna have to retape the fingerboard. Then I've got to scrape that clear coat off the frets. I've got to go back and and, uh, and uh, probably hit them with some more 1500 or 1000 grit and 1500, and then I'm gonna have to repolish them and everything. So I'm just not gonna waste a lot of time here, you know, uh, really trying to polish these things up because I have to go back over them again. So. Um, that's basically about it. It's just about patience and, and hunting down those uh, high spots and, and you know, not not uh, 
tearing up your fret wire with, with overly abrasive sandpaper or grits and, you know, steel wool that's too rough or, and, uh, you know, it's, it's just about patient and the, the more you do it, patience, the more you do it, the better you get at it, the quicker you get at it. Um, you know, this, this works real well. I, I very rarely ever have to go back over the frets, you know, when, during my setup, uh, stage when I'm putting the base together. Um, it's just very, very, on the odd occasion, maybe I might have one or two um, high frets, but it doesn't happen very often. So um, if that were the case, you can use these little uh, fingerboard protectors and you know, you can just work on that one fret. Um, but if you're doing the whole the whole neck, the, the tape works better. Um, you know, you can kind of kind of work on the whole thing at once, and uh, not not fumble around with these little things. Uh, that's pretty much it. All all I'm going to do now is take that tape off, and uh, I'm going to re-tape the fingerboard, but I'm just going to tape across the frets. That's going to help protect the frets uh, while I uh, carve the back. So. Uh, the next stage will be uh, carving the, the back of the neck, but uh, that's a long and tedious process, and, and uh, I probably won't do any videos on that. But uh, anyway, that's it. That's how I I, I do my fret work, and uh, I think they come out real good. And uh, you know, they the bases play nice, so uh, I'm going to leave it at that. Y'all have a great day. Thanks for watching the videos and uh, Bud LeCompte again here signing off. Thanks. Bye.